Master in Anatomy and Physiology with Indra Mani Pandey. What's going on guys? Okay, welcome back to my another lecture. In last lecture, we talked about the cartilage. We just like described what cartilage is. We give, uh, we talked about, you know, like general characteristics of cartilage and we uh, went through some uh, terms that are related with cartilage and I gave you some take home messages in last lecture. But in today's lecture, out of three cartilages uh, in this course, like uh, the hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage, in today's uh, lecture, what I'm going to focus is, I'm going to focus on the hyaline cartilage. Uh, first of all, let me give you a brief description of like hyaline cartilage first. So most prevalent type of cartilage is a hyaline cartilage. So it is like most prevalent in human body. and it is like more flexible in nature and resilient in nature. It is smooth, but it is tough, okay? And it forms like temporary embryonic skeleton, which are uh, later like replaced by bone. And as you can see here, it appearance is like glass-like, but semi-transparent or semi-translucent in appearance, okay? And that's the appearance for this one, right? And when you talk about, let's say, the, the structurally, you know, now if you focus on that, we have to identify some parts. I'm gonna give you that task um, uh, in a few moments, okay? But let's try, okay? So if you look this one, the hyaline cartilage has many components on it, right? It has the outside component like this, inside component, and then other outside component, right? So this is usually considered as perichondrium, okay? As we know in from last lecture, perichondrium, right? It is an outer layer which is made up of dense, uh, irregular connective tissue usually, and this is the area where you can find chondroblast or chondrocytes and the dense matrix, right? And this is also a perichondrium because it surrounds that uh, inner content, the matrix, okay? So that's the general uh, concept here. So this is the area where you can find those cells, okay? The, this is the area where you can find those cells. And this is the area which I already told you this is also a, called a perichondrium because it surrounds that cartilage, okay? That's the general structure. We'll go more in detail in just a moment, okay? And remember that the externally it is covered by perichondrium, right? And the cells here inside, you can just see, like just leave it here. These are called chondrocytes. Remember this, these cells are chondrocytes. There are two types of cells you can think about. Those are called chondro, chondroblast, okay? And chondrocytes, okay? Basically chondroblasts, as I mentioned you in last lecture, these are immature or new cells from where these chondrocytes arise, okay? And these are usually in the lacuna, right? So this is the lacuna and these cells are usually like that way, okay? We'll see um, in just a moment in more detail, okay? Like this way. And this is a lacuna, okay? Lacuna is a small pits where these chondrocytes, uh, you know, uh, like to stay you know this is like a house for those chondrocytes okay now uh, if you're talking about this area you can as you can see here there are numerous chondrocytes there right so there's a bunch of chondrocytes there's a dense uh, you know, dense uh, area here where you can find a lot of chondrocytes there right and as you know that the cartilages there is no blood supply except in perichondrium perichondrium you can see some blood supply here um, I think this the red thing here. I it might be some kind of red blood cell. I'm not sure, but you know it looks like that. But in perichondrium, you can see those things. But really, in cartilage area like this area, right? You cannot see those things. Okay, that's what it is. And remember that this matrix inside here in the cartilage, this area, the matrix area, right? What are you going to find there? You can find an abundant amount of collagen fibers, right? But relatively, you know, little elastic fibers. But it is very hard to see, right? But, you know, the elastic fibers may be absent, but you're going to find abundant amount of uh, collagen fibers here. 
And that's that's the important thing we need to understand here. And the matrix is primarily, um, to be specific, these are type 2 uh, collagen, and you have a, a chondroitin sulfate, um, which allows that matrix to become more thick. Okay, that is called what? Chondroitin. Let me write down that. That is called chondroitin sulfate. Okay, you can find this one in the matrix. Okay, and you have a type, right? Type 2 collagen fibers. And the elastic fibers usually absent, but, you know, I think about that also. Okay, that's uh, that's the you know general idea about this, right? Now let's move on to the another slide, um, and we'll come back to the function and location in short moment. Okay, look, this is more clear than the last one. I don't know where these slides are taken from, but it looks like it's a slide from Trachea. If I'm not wrong, uh, it might be the slide from Trachea. How can I say this? Uh, I, if I look here. In the luminal side, I can see these columnar, the pseudo-stratified type of columnar epithelium with uh, the cilia on them, right? Uh, you can refer back to my uh, tissue topic, you know, you can, you know, like the epithelial tissue and just like review that. It looks like that to me. It, it might be from trachea, but I'm not sure. So as you can see, these are, as I mentioned you, these are like chondroblasts or chondrocytes, right, in the lacunae. And these chondrocytes looks like a basophils. If you know that basophil is a white blood cell, where you can find the structure is like that. You can see the structure like the basophilic structure. These chondrocytes, okay, in like lacunae. And as you can see here, uh, I think it's trying to project you some kind of fiber here or matrix, but I'm not sure. You can just say this one is a matrix or some kind of fiber, okay. Uh, anything I can take that. Okay, matrix or fiber. I'm not sure. I think it's like more clearly if you look that it looks like some kind of fiber, but I don't want to be specific on that. And what is this? Okay, what is this? This is the area where you can find those uh, those uh, fibrocytes, right? So this is a real area. Okay, this is the exact area where you can find those five, you know, those uh, chondrocytes. And this area is also a perichondrium, as I mentioned you, because peri means outside, like surrounding kind of things. And before I, you know, just like give you more information, as you know, the hyaline is uh, the term com came from Greek, and it means a glassy in appearance. So it is, it appeared as a glassy things, right? As you can see here, right? So that's why it is called hyaline cartilage. Okay, this is another thing you might need to understand, but which is not very important uh, info, but you know, that's better to know, right? Okay, so that's it on this uh, slide. Let's move on to another slide. Oh my God, this is super good. As you can see here, uh, this is a matrix side. Okay, this is a matrix, right? Uh, it's trying to project exactly inside here right so it, it's pointing toward the cell inside so it should be chondrocyte here uh chondrocyte if it is projecting here the outside part right it is a lacuna okay it is a lacuna and this area is again this is a uh, perichondrium right perichondrium and this is an area this is a matrix area interstitial area right so that's where you can find those chondrocytes and matrix okay uh, that's it on this one. Now, let me uh, give you like a little bit more information, right? Where you can find this type of uh, cartilages. The main area you can find is called inch of like bones, like near joints, like, uh, you know, articular surfaces where two bones communicate with each other. Like, for example, in a knee joint, right? So you have a one bone from top part, right? And another from 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 bottom part, right? And these articular cartilage you can see here, this is a type of hyaline cartilage, okay? It is a hyaline cartilage, but it is a specific type of hyaline cartilage which covers the articular surfaces of the bones, or, you know, that's why it is called that. And, you know, uh, this is a type of hyaline cartilage, okay? That's, we need to understand that. What happens uh, if that uh, hyaline, this articular cartilage or type of hyaline cartilage uh, disintegrate or tears or ruptures what happens gonna, is like you know these bones gonna come together right and what it's gonna do is they're gonna 
they're gonna you know they're gonna slide on each other right that's gonna create a friction there and you may have osteoarthritis right which is basically a disintegration of that bone okay so that's the that's the idea here and one of the main function of this thing is as you can see it reduces the friction right it protects the bone right and it allows flexibility easily smooth movement between two bones right it supports right it supports these are the main you know main idea here so one thing is just like say movement is one of that right and another is called flexibility right another is support right support and another you can say uh, reduce friction these are the main function of that highland cartilage and before I move on, uh, what I want to mention you is if that articular cartilage gets damaged and we don't know, you know, usually we don't know like when our cartilage starts like, you know, disintegrating or tearing apart. And when it's going to, because like we do not have that nerve supply here, so we don't know that. When the cartilage is like, you know, usually at the last stage, what happens is the bone's going to like freak, you know, come together and they are gonna have friction and we're gonna have osteoarthritis and our nerve cells in the bone will sense that and we'll figure out oh my god we can we have a problem in our cartilage and that's all that's already done you know we cannot go back because cartilage repairs very slowly and that's the last stage so that's why it is very important to usually taking care of our cartilage because once they just like rupture it takes much more time like you know it takes years and decades to repair because it is very slow and because another reason is it has a thick uh, uh, matrix where these uh, lacuna cannot move to that uh, area where the rupture uh, taken place right and there is no blood supply so there is no direct blood supply because only on the perichondrium other things depends on gax right like diffusion patterns right so that's what it is and another thing i want to give you before i go home uh this cartilage can also find in the trachea where you can find a c-shaped structure right and this structure actually help to open that airway that conducting pathway so the air can go easily so they cannot collapse if they collapse you can have problem in, in breathing right so that's why these cartilage play a very important role to keep uh, open that area that conducting pathway so we can breathe normally so that's another area you can find that okay thank you so much for watching and i'm going to cover fiber cartilage in my next lecture uh, take care bye bye please subscribe to see more videos regarding anatomy and physiology